Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Some people live and don't do anything with their lives. Our guests today are two extraordinary women who have really done some outstanding things, and I would like to welcome Dr. Doris Zanes Flesher and Dr. Frida Zanes, and we're going to talk about the American Disability Act. And welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. As sisters, you collaborated on a book called The Disability Rights Movement, From Charity to Confrontation. What prompted you to write this book? Well, I got polio. I contracted polio when I was two and a half mm -hmm. and lived in institutions for about eight years. Um, I, 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 I ran into a lot of discrimination when I uh, went to college. I found that other disabled kids who, who couldn't go to college because colleges were not accessible. At that time, I walked and I could go. Um, and w when I looked for a job, I really ran into discrimination. And, and I noticed more and more discrimination, which led me to the disability rights movement mm -hmm. and then to the writing this book. Phenomenal. Uh, I just want to say that when I, in the book, I we begin the book with per brief personal notes. And in the personal notes, I say that the most important thing that happened to me in my life happened two years before I was born. And that means Frida contracting polio. And as she was speaking, Frida said, I walked. Well, let me say she walked with crutches and braces, and she had to get on buses, mm -hmm. then which were not uh, accessible. And I remember watching people complain, saying, why is that girl getting on a bus? Why is she just at home? Um, I saw the discrimination. I lived with it, and it was personal to me. So disability not only affects those people who are disabled, but those people who love them. So sad, because we don't live with disabled people as in Europe, because of the world wars there, they're more used to people with disabilities. And I think they've adjusted much better than we have here in the United States. Well, we have an Americans with Disabilities Act, so I, they when don't. it comes, and they don't, so hooray for us. <laughs> 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 what is the meaning of the title? The, the, the title is, it, it, it shows the origin and development of the disability rights movement from uh, uh, from the civil rights movement, it comes out of the civil rights movement, and the um, the the uh, the the uh, you know when you think of disabled people, often you think of charity, but people no longer want charity. They want uh, and uh, they're able and to confront and willing to confront the barriers mm -hmm. uh, that keep them out of the mainstream of society. And we wanted to put it in the civil rights context because people with disabilities, like most other people, uh, have the resourcefulness to be able to deal with their disability. What really holds them back, and this surprises people, and this has been documented by people who started doing research in health and found out what they really, people with disabilities really needed was a civil rights movement. What holds them back is the discrimination. Well, all right, what exactly is the definition of disability? A disability is a... Uh, a, 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 a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life functions. And uh, uh, mostly when you think of, uh, of a disability, you think of people who are deaf or blind or people who use wheelchairs. But there is invisible disabilities, like people who have cancer or diabetes or heart disease or learning disabilities. Or, or psychiatric disabilities. And I think people are surprised to know that the overwhelming, overwhelming number of people with disabilities How many are, are in the United are States? 54 million and growing. And the overwhelming number of people with disabilities have invisible disabilities. So I think, you know, when we think of disability, we really have to stretch our minds. Because when you think of disability, you think of somebody that you can visually see. Mm -hmm. You can't, it's not. Okay. All these silent disabilities. Okay, now think about somebody who's whipping around in an aerodynamic wheelchair as opposed to somebody who has a very serious heart condition. Who's more disabled? But 
you know, that's what we have to, we really have trouble understanding. We have, we it's an education process. Right. So that's what you do with your book, because as I understand it, it's become a textbook, really, mm -hmm. talking about it. Why don't you to share your credentials with us about what you have accomplished so much in your life? Well, I have a, a Ph.D. in mathematics. I was a math professor. Uh huh. Where? Um, at New Jersey Institute of Technology. <laughs> I drove a car. I lived in Man I always, well, I didn't always. I come from Brooklyn, but I lived in Manhattan, and I would drive to New Jersey, New Jersey. Newark. And uh, it was a great job. Uh -huh. I really and loved it. And Frida did all kinds of things like uh, create a program at New Jersey Institute of Technology, which I played a part in at one point, uh, in which she uh, brought disabled kids into the on school on the campus. And she also had a role in making the campus accessible. I have a uh, PhD in English literature, but I've written in uh, different fields, and I've written articles and Dorothy work in, in, in having to do with disability. And I've given uh, uh, presentations in the United States all, and, all, and different parts of the world. What, OK, you said it, it, the Disability Act was evolving around the civil rights movement. About when did this all start, or what was the root cause of it? Well, uh, the disability, look, I mean, there has been discrimination going back <laughs> from the beginning of the 13 colonies, because it's, you know, it's part, people are, what can we say, people are uncomfortable with disability, I don't know, we say, because it's really threatening. It's the mm -hmm. one minority that, to which we're all susceptible. Uh, I think people are surprised to know that in 1911 there was something called the Chicago Ugly Laws. What? The Chicago Ugly Laws. What is that? It meant that if you were found on the street looking ugly, or <laughs> somebody would find you un find you not presentable because of a disability, you could be arrested. The oh law was God. on the books until 1974. Now there, I, I don't, I can't find a lot of people who were arrested, but there, it really, it gives you a sense of what the world was like. I mean, even in places where people weren't actually arrested, they were thrown out of uh, uh, restaurants, uh, public places. Say, this is, this, we're uncomfortable looking at you. Uh, so people have been discriminated, and that's relatively minor. People weren't able to work. Mm -hmm. People weren't able to uh, go to school. Okay. Right. Now, we say that the movement actually began in the 1970s, about late 1960s, early 1970s, after the, 19, after the 1964 Civil Rights Act, many, dis many uh, rights movements were spawned, like the women's movement, mm -hmm. the gay rights movement. Well, so was the disability rights movement. But we talk about a group in the 1930s, and I think this is interesting because there were women who really played a very significant role. The leader of it was a young woman named Sylvia Flexer Bassoff. And uh, they went to Washington to complain because they had a PH category put on their documents so they couldn't get jobs. PH meant physically handicapped. Now, some of these people, you couldn't, they didn't even find their handicaps until they were uh, in fifth grade, one of them. They were the most minimal disabilities. But if you were seen as having any kind of a disability, you could not get a, 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 a civil service job. Because they put this on. On PH. Meanwhile, who's president of the United States? Franklin, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Roosevelt mm -hmm. who has a very severe disability, but wisely, wisely tries to keep it kind of secret because this is a mindset, and he knows he can't get elected if people know how disabled he is. Anyway, these people thought they had sit-ins, they had hunger strikes, they, had, they did all kinds of things, and they got that pH taken off. That's so wonderful. People, that's unbelievable. But that's, that's in the 1930s. So people assume that, we even assumed, that it was the wisdom of the federal government to hire people with disabilities. But no, everything, everything, almost everything that people with disabilities have gotten, they had a fight for. Well, but you know what? Everybody who's gotten anything has That's always right. had to right. fight for. I know, but people with disabilities are seen as people who other people, quote unquote, feel sorry for and do good work. You know, they even go to heaven doing those <laughs> kinds of good work. But, you know, it's not like that. They have to fight. What are key elements of the law? Now, when you say the law, there are a lot of laws. Now, what what we want to uh, yeah. start, start with yeah. is that there was a law called Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. This law was the last section of the act. And 
uh, and basically what it said is you cannot discriminate, you cannot, you, uh, that, that the people with disabilities, it provides a civil rights to people with disabilities in all programs and activities that, that receive federal funds. Mm -hmm. This section was put into the act by the aide to the Senate, a Senate committee. Um, while they were putting the act together, the, the bill together, very few people knew it was there. The president didn't know it was there when he signed it. And many legislators who signed the bill didn't right. know it was there. And most disability activists didn't know it was there. Surprising. Some, yes. <laughs> this, this was an uh, amazing thing. When, of course, when they found out, that changed. That changed things up. Oh, so that that was a, I think that was a, a, a very important political moment. With the ADA law coming into effect, uh -huh. there's so many different things that people had to retroact, retrofit rather, their um, offices, the bathrooms. I mean, you have to have um, a ramp. You have to have wheelchair well, accessible things. What other things did people have to do to? Um, All right. Fly. Yeah. Well, well. For example, there's a lot of misunderstanding about the law. The law All is right. very fair. It says if you do new construction, right? New con build new buildings, extensive renovation, then you have to do it, make it accessible. Okay. Otherwise, you only have to make it accessible if it's readily achievable. Which means if it's not too expensive. You know, depending on what you can afford, what your uh, organization can, agency can afford, and it's not too disruptive. We say so cheap and easy. Yeah. It's got to be cheap and easy. <laughs> cheap and, easy. and <laughs> cheap and easy means different things. If you're a mom and pop store on a corner, right. cheap and easy might be a little ramp, which not that cost yeah, too much, or get you more customers. If you're the, the Empire, Empire State, State Building, building <laughs> it could be millions of dollars. Right. But did you find that people were willing to comply, or did you oh, have no. a lot of obstacles? You have to use the law. The law is nothing, you know, it's interesting. We have in our group, Disabled in Action, we have a one-step program. Which is? Well, basically what it is is if you have a step, mm. we ask you to ramp up. That's considered readily achievable. Okay. Um, and people say, most people will say either, sure, I'll do it, or people will say, no, I won't do it. Either way, they don't do it. The only way to make them do it is to force them. Okay. So, did you have to implement the law a lot to get things achieved? To get the things, do we work with the Human Rights Commission and we have to, yes, you have to, you have to use the law. Do you feel that disability, people with disabilities is going to be increasing? Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do I feel? It's just, it's not a question of my, my, my it gut has been it's in the past. True. Yeah. It's true. It's, they've been increasing. They've been increasing considerably. It was 49 million when we started. It went up to 54, and we stopped at 54, and it's still going up. Why will it go up? It's going to go up because, and by the way, this is good news. And this always, it's all, all counterintuitive. It's good news because uh, we're going to live longer, and we're going right. to live better. <laughs> but when you get older, the ch chances increase that you're going to get something. Everybody gets something. But we're going to get something, and we're going to live with it, and we're going to live well, and we're going to live a long time. And we're just going to many conditions that were uh, c considered, you know, death death warrants become uh, chronic conditions, and we live well with them. So that's that's what's going to be happening. And of course, and also people survive all kinds of things. Yeah, and and you know, amazing. I mean, there was was a time if you couldn't walk, you were stuck. But now I can go with my scooter. I can pass people. You certainly can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me just tell you about Frida. I just have to just inter interject yeah. this. Frida, when she was went to college, was using crutches and braces, and uh, she used to, and then she had to get into a scooter. So somebody could say, "Oh my goodness, you know, she was able to at least walk, and now she's <laughs> wheeling around in this thing." And the way Frida put it, she said, "Well, before I had to worry that people were going to knock me down." Now they have to worry I'm going to knock them down. down. <laughs> and that expresses me better. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say, you, well, what would you like to see change going forward? A change? Mm -hmm. I, if I had my druthers, I would like the, uh, I would like to see more enforcement of the law. 
Mm -hmm. I think the law is often ignored, mm -hmm. and then we have to go after it, and it's not easy. It's a lot of trouble, and sometimes we have to demonstrate and sit in, which we do sometimes, uh, but it's the only way to get things done. Um, I would like the, the, you know, with some laws, there is more enforcement. Mm. The ADA, a lot of disability laws, there's very little enforcement. So you kind of depend on the goodwill of legislators um, and the uh, people who do the, 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 the building. There's so much, this, this is something we really need. I would also like to see a broad disability uh, coalition throughout the United States. And and more and I'd like to see us more on the in the media. This is okay. a very big problem. Okay. Not only in the media, but speaking for ourselves, like we are now. Very mm -hmm. very often, people with disabilities don't get the opportunity to speak for themselves. You have doctors and uh, doctors social and workers. social workers and other people. Of course, they know more than the person with the disability knows what they need. Um, what changes have you seen with modern technology? Well, uh, for one thing, what, the, what, what the I've just computer. mentioned, the fact that people are living in I mean, you know, that realize that uh, at one time to have high blood pressure meant you, you, were gonna, you had five years to live. I mean, there are, things, there are conditions that we... D look at AIDS. AIDS was a death sentence. And now for many people, we have these cocktails and it's a, it's a chronic illness. That's really going to happen with many other diabetes, uh, the, the diabetes and many other conditions. And oh my goodness, with the Human Genome Project, we're going to find out a lot. We're going to be able to take conditions that were so serious and we're going to be able to do with a little bit of tweaking. Instead of no cancer, we'll just be able to tweak the genes a little bit. We won't have to do, we're going to talk about flash, burn, and poison. You know, the fact <laughs> that uh, what we did for cancer. And we're going to say, well, well, that was ridiculous. We're going to look back on this and say, look how we treated this. It still is ridiculous. I, I know, but that's the best we've got. And right mm -hmm. now, that's the best we've got. And people who, who, who know that this is ridiculous, at the same time, say, you know, people, what, 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 what else do we have? So there will be many, many changes. And technology ha is, is changing things in so many ways. Uh, we, think about this. Think about uh, some, what, what disab the term disability, the meaning of it. Somebody who is very computer literate and is in a wheelchair, or is blind, or is deaf. If they have right. the software, or they have the access to the computer, and they're very computer literate, they're very able. And you get a guy who can, big strong guy who walks over to the computer, but is <laughs> computer illiterate, he's far more disabled. So it's, it's really changed, it's, it's, it's leveling the playing field for people with disabilities. What is the Work Incentive Improvement Act? Well, the Work Incentive Improvement, Improvement Act. Act. Well, yeah. it's, a, it's very important. If I, if we'll tell a story. We'll tell the story of some, a woman by the name of Lynn Thompson in the 70s. In fact, this was on 60 Minutes. Uh -huh. She had muscular dystrophy, but she was very resourceful, and she worked up a business. She had an answering service in her house. But what she needed was the... She uh, needed attended care. She, she needed, needed help. She, help yeah, in the house, and she needed uh, medications. Okay, so that she got from benefits, mm -hmm. and meanwhile she supported herself. She, you know, she paid her rent, she paid for Because of this ridiculous law that said you either get benefits or y you work, but if you work, you can't get benefits, because the meaning if you're right. disabled, disabled means un unable to work. So she was told by California Medicare, Medicaid, mm -hmm. that they would take away her benefits, and therefore she would have to go into a nursing home. Now this is a oh woman who was used to being independent. This was so terrible for her that she commits suicide. And it was on oh 60 no. Minutes. A month later, the law was changed, but she didn't know that, that the change, in, in California. But the, the point is this, that we, we still have this kind of, um, uh, the, this legal system is still not, the Work Incentive Impro Improvement Act improves that. That is to say, the federal government will allow people to get the benefits, and they can still work. But states have to buy in, and they buy in at different levels. Some mm -hmm. states haven't bought in at all. New York State has. Hasn't so at this That's point. That's surprising. And states have, and some states have bought in at various levels. But it's so it's but it's on the way to having a set a, uh, a system that makes sense, so people can not only be tax users, but but taxpayers. Would you like to leave the audience with? What I would like to leave, I would like disabled people to know their movement mm -hmm. and to be proud of it.
proud of their movement. I would like non-disabled people to know about the disability rights movement. And I, I want people to realize this. 54 million, we are the largest minority, the most diverse minority. I want people to know that disability rights movement is part of the great history of civil rights in this country. And it's part of the human condition. We will, most of us, if we live long enough, will experience it. We first experienced it in our grandparents and our parents and then in ourselves. It's just w what it is to be human. And I also, you know, when people with disabilities can contribute, first of all, we do, when, we, when, we're good, when we do the right things for people with disabilities, we're doing the right thing for ourselves because that they're us eventually. Right. But also when people with disabilities can contribute, they can go to school, they can go to work, they can, they can have a, a, a way of expressing their talents, it not only is good for them, but it's good for society as a whole. Well, would you say that people don't know how to respond to people with disabilities? Sometimes, and sometimes people, I think, it's the only disability, or uh, the only minority, I mean, where, and people, I think, on some level recognize this, that anyone can become part of it at any time. It's not a comfortable thing when you think about it. Uh, and people don't want to think about it. So they, I think they, some people shun it, mm -hmm. you know, some people avoid I mean, I know a severely disabled woman who got hurt in an automobile accident, and she said when she used to see a disabled person, she would cross the street. Now mm -hmm. she knows the feeling, you know, but she had a sense that this could happen to anyone, and it did, you know. So, so this is a frightening thing, I think, for too many people. Well, sure, because like you say, it can happen to anybody at any time, whether it's overtly uh, handicapped, or if it's a silent handicap. Yeah, it could be a d disease. Right, it could right. Be birth. That's the effects of aging. I mean, things start to, you know, like just like you have an yeah. old car. I mean, you know, <laughs> after a while, things start to go. I, I think if people could have the understanding that, yeah, things start to go, but, you know, we're going to... We're going to move on. Yeah, on. you do pretty well. How can I have a question to ask you, because sometimes, you know, you come into a situation where you meet somebody who's disabled. Do you, um, I don't know how to put this politely, I don't know politically correct or what, but do you acknowledge the fact that they are handicapped or do you ignore it or do you just? I don't think you ignore it. That's okay. what used to be done in the past. Okay. But, but and, and wait a minute, I meant ignore it in the fact that you don't talk about it. No, that's what I mean. Oh, okay. It, it depends, you know, I mean, you, 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 you don't avoid it. Right. Uh, if it if it's natural to talk about it, you do. I mean, I wouldn't go. You wouldn't go over to a stranger in the street and say, "What's your disability?" <laughs> no. but, but say you're having coffee with somebody and you're right. talking to them and you're getting very friendly. There may you may feel it appropriate to ask. I ask people. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm disabled, so I <laughs> may feel I have. But I sometimes. But I don't ask, always ask. I have to feel. And I, it's hard to know when that feeling is, when it's all right. But I know sometimes it's okay, and I can mm -hmm. ask people. I think also the other point is, when you're dealing with a disabled person, you're dealing with a person, so the person comes first. I mean, for instance, you're dealing with an Irish person. You don't say, hey, and how's the shamrock? Or, you know, <laughs> did you have a drink lately? I mean, you know, you talk to the person, you know? You don't, right. deal, you don't talk to the Irish. Well, no, a person with a disability, it's part of who they are, but, you know, no. so if it's relevant, if you're talking about the situation in Ireland, you say, gee, how does it feel, you know, as an, an Irish-American, this must really have... But if you're talking about, you know, you know, what the Yankees did, I mean, I suppose it's, you know, when it's relevant, it's relevant, just like anything else that people feel uncomfortable. I love the story that Frida tells about being in a um, amusement park, and uh, she's in her scooter, and she's with the, the family there with the kid, and, uh, oh, the, yeah, the kid, and the says, kid says, I want to take that, that ride. ride. I want <laughs> that ride. And the, and the parents are saying, shh, shh, shh. And I say, it's all right. <laughs> you know, it's all right. Let us, you, know, you know. The kids, they, they, were they, they felt were felt embarrassed. Right. Right. The but kid really was being a person and responding right. to what he saw. Frida got a kick out of it. They thought she was going to burst into tears and, you know, or well, something. 
You know she's disabled. I mean, come on. It's <laughs> not new but to her. They, didn't, they felt uncomfortable. Right, right. Is they what that point is. Because you know, they, they didn't they know how to handle the situation. We even have a song called Let the Children Stare. Because they do. Yeah, you know, they and, sometimes ask. And it's all right. It's all right. How but you get you, like but that? You, wouldn't, you wouldn't expect an adult to ask that same question. But the kid asks it. It's okay. Right. right. And, uh, and, and, and it's the thing is, we're more open about our disability just as we're more open about a lot of things. You know, it's a, a, a more open society. I seem free to get into her. her she has a, a, a vet and it mm -hmm. has a lift. And People will sometimes look and it's really, hey, but it's really good stuff. I mean, they're, they're free. They're just, you know, with, and she would have one of her old scooters. She would have a little sign that said, Hell on Wheels. Right, the little gray head lady was saying, Hell. Anyway, she'd get into the into the thing and the lift picks up and then she, and she's the driver. I mean, these big guys are behind her and they go in after her and she's the driver. And people will look at them and that's interesting to look at. Why shouldn't they look? That's wonderful. You look at people getting on the on the buses. I mean, there was a time when these people couldn't get on the bus. And look at all the other people, people who can't lift their legs so well can use the, the, the lifts also. These are things to look at. I said, hey, that's and a we're very proud. good. Time we're that's very good. proud because we, my group, Disabled in Action, uh, sued the MTA to get those lifts. And oh, fought for it and, and stood in front of buses. We stood in front of buses and got beat up by cops. And that's terrific. So well, I, I want to thank both of you, ladies. Oh, Doris, it was thank such a pleasure. you. And Frida, thank, thank you, you so much. It was fun. It, it was. was. Thank you so much for joining us. I know I've learned quite a bit about the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and I hope you have too. Bye now. Do we have anybody back there?